Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and I guess a plug side chat. I'm going to have to to rush this one though. I <laughs> I, I got to go visit Santa. It's another another Boltimus video. Um, so I want to get out as soon as I can. But something I wanted to talk about because it, it it's making waves, right? It's big news. And I watched Liv and Patrick's uh, The Electric uh, Car Duo electric duo. I'll have to double check their name. Used to be Maki Vlog. You you know, you know Liv and Patrick. So I'll, I'll put a link to their video below, but they actually interviewed someone from Donut Labs at CES. And so why this is making waves, and if you're watching this video, you likely already know all of the details, right? All the deets about uh, what Donut Labs is claiming, right? It's one of the most uh, exciting things to come out of EV news in you know recent times and essentially what they're saying is that they're already in production for solid state batteries and they're basically scaling and they're working with OEMs and this is going to revolutionize electric transportation so just so you know, I, I am critical by nature. I tend to be a consumer advocate first and foremost above everything else. It's why you don't really see me selling or promoting anything on this channel. I just share my experiences and my feelings as a customer consumer as I use different products, but I'm not really promoting or selling them at all. And so my analysis here, if you will, of what Donut Labs told Liv and Patrick, what they've presented, what they've published. I'm going in with the assumption that everything that they said is literally true in an accurate statement. And then I'm sort of analyzing that critically and looking at, well, what was omitted? what wasn't talked about, and I sort of came to a conclusion from that. And the conclusion I came to is you probably want to temper your expectations when it comes to what Donut Labs is actually offering. And the jury is still out, at least for me, whether it can accurately be referred to as solid state battery or what we would expect a solid state battery to be. It is possible. I'm not I'm not discounting that, uh, but the omission of key details is the thing that I think is telling my spidey senses are tingling and I think what they are actually offering is a supercapacitor, not a battery. And that's an important distinction and I'll explain why. So on the surface, right, 400 watt hours per kilogram, that's about a 33% increase over the most energy dense lithium ion batteries that are currently available. So the LG, GM, NCMA, uh, Ultium cells are on paper 300 watt hours per kilogram at the, uh, cell level. So this uh, Donut Labs battery would represent a 33% increase over that. And just to give a real world example of what that would look like, it would mean that something like the Chevy Silverado EV could preserve its 500 mile range while reducing the overall weight of the vehicle by about 400 to 500 pounds. Notable, significant, not earth shattering, but a, a, a huge step in the right direction and actually in alignment with what we've seen from some of the other solid state, I, I, I want to say offerings, but really pre-production uh, test samples, right? So SES, QuantumScape, you know, that's solid power, all of the, all of the different solid state batteries that we've seen getting promoted are all sort of stepping off at that 400 watt hour per kilogram or better um, energy density. 
In addition, though, Donut Labs is talking about having an 11C charging rate. So in theory, that means you're, t you're charging at, you know, from empty to full in about five minutes. So for a battery, super impressive, almost unheard of. The fastest we're seeing from, you know, traditional batteries at this point is maybe a 10 minute charge from 5% to 90% or something around that, that range. So there, there are diminishing returns. Anything, anything below 10 to 15 minutes adding 70 to 80% of the battery, in my opinion, in my experience as a, as a driver, as an EV driver, uh, anything past that is diminishing returns, but it is still a notable improvement. But where I think things got off the rails with Donut is where they said, okay, this technology doesn't include lithium. Hmm, no lithium. And they also made it sound like it didn't include any or a substantial amount of other critical materials. So no nickel, no cobalt, no manganese, no basically anything else. And, and that, that's, I think, the thing that triggered me right there is when they said that. Uh, another one of their claims is 100,000 cycle life. Well, that's 10 times better than even LFP batteries, which are <laughs> oftentimes 10 times better than uh, nickel-based batteries. So that's a massive, you know, again, step change in lifespan if you're talking about 100,000 cycle life. But that's another thing that made my spidey senses tingle, and I'll get back to that in a second. Then they said also the cost is less than current uh, battery technologies. And I, I know what the costs are now for things like LFP. You're talking about down to $50 or less per you know kilowatt hour for LFP batteries. So they're saying they're undercutting even that. Hmm. Things are getting really interesting now. What what is it exactly that Donut is offering? And the reason why I say it's likely just a supercapacitor is all of those numbers, all of those metrics that they provided all align with what a supercapacitor would be capable of achieving. But the funny thing is the weaknesses of supercapacitors are the things that they never really talk about in relation to batteries because they just aren't issues for batteries, right? And one of the things, and this is something, a lesson that I think the community has learned and needed to learn with sodium ion batteries is while on paper they look great, the problem is the papers didn't really talk about the voltage range. So if you look at something like a nickel-based battery where it has a very linear uh, voltage range, but it's a short linear voltage voltage range, right? So you maybe go up to 4.1, 4.2 volts per cell, and then down to about three volts per cell. So it's a very narrow voltage range. And then you look at lithium iron phosphate, it's kind of an S curve, but it's a really flat voltage range, right? Where you're talking about no more than 3.6 to 3.7 volts on the top end, no more than like 2.5 volts on the bottom end. And it's a really flat uh, voltage profile through the meat of the, the, the energy of the, the cell. And so sodium ion batteries came out and it's like up here, down there, really wide voltage range to the point that a lot of inverters just don't know how to manage the power for sodium. So that's going to be a, a similar question for this donut battery is what's the voltage profile? Is it flat? Is it, is it wide ranging? What's, what's the voltage profile? That wasn't addressed. Another thing that wasn't addressed is the Coulombic efficiency. Because if it is a capacitor, well, now you're looking at a significantly lower Coulombic efficiency, which can matter, right? If, if you're saying essentially that a traditional nickel or iron-based lithium battery is 99% uh, Coulombic efficiency, round-trip efficiency, if that supercapacitor is only 90% or 80%, right? Lithium titanate has the same problem where it's a terrible 
uh, round trip efficiency, the columbic efficiency is terrible. Well, now if you're going to charge up a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack in an EV, well, it's going to take you 110 kilowatt hours on top of any other losses anywhere else in the system. So that's a, immediately a 10% hit on your efficiency. Wasn't really discussed. The other problem that capacitors have, even supercapacitors, is self discharge rates. You know, I can, you know, fill up my Bolt EV 64, 65 kilowatt hour battery pack, fill it up, park it, let it sit unplugged a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, come back. I won't even necessarily see a bar gone, right? I won't, I won't even see 1% of the battery energy lost. It self-discharge rates on lithium based batteries are minimal, but capacitors could be 5%, 10%, 20% a week. We don't know. So again, that's a number that you wouldn't think to ask because of modern battery technology that needs to be asked about these donut cells. And then the other thing is, again, the big 100,000 cycle life, it's gonna last longer than whatever you put it in. Well, batteries are measured in cycle life. Capacitors, they have a calendar aging problem. So while a lithium battery cell could sit for months, years in storage and lose almost no capacity and when it does start to lose capacity it slowly loses capacity well that's very different than capacitors with a hundred thousand cycle life that have a 10 year or less lifespan when operating in environments where there's a high voltage discharge or um, charge and higher temperature environments both of which are very common with EV batteries and EV applications. And if that's the case, you might never even approach your cycle life. Your battery in your EV might just die after eight, nine, 10 years, depending on how you use it. And you just need to replace the whole thing. Now, of course, if their prices are correct and they're not using any critical materials, well, then yeah, you might say, oh, well, don't it. I'll just buy a new 150 200 kilowatt hour battery pack off of you for five ten thousand dollars and do that every eight to ten years and maybe consumers will be okay with that but i think that's something that needs to be addressed and talked about up front because some consumers will not be okay with that you know and then again like i said the harsher environment the faster these capacitors would degrade and die uh, so it's not quite a single use battery, right? But it is essentially a battery that has limited lifespan and basically a built-in, I don't want to say obsolescence, but just a, a built-in lifespan where it's going to die. And now you're basically trading off some of the, you know, some of the advantages that an EV has over an internal combustion engine vehicle where an EV will just keep going and going and going and going, you know, five years, 10 years, 20 years after an ICE vehicle will be dead and rusting in the dirt. So I think these are things that need to be addressed um, and need to be asked, right? And again, the reason I say that it's very likely a capacitor or supercapacitor of some sort is because a lot of times those things are going to be made with like graphene and, and carbon. And at that point, you're talking about light, high energy. But again, with the actual calendar aging, the self-discharge rates, and whether it can accurately be described as a solid state battery, I don't know. But it would explain a lot. It, that The donut... Uh, labs offering being a some sort of a super capacitor would almost fully explain how they were able to jump ahead of multi-billion dollar uh, companies that are developing and moving to production slowly with solid state batteries it would explain their price point or claimed price point it would 
explain their energy density. It would explain their claims of cycle life. It would explain their 11C charging rate. It would explain all of these other factors. And at that point, though, once you establish that, oh, this is very likely a supercapacitor and not a battery, then there's a whole different set of questions you need to ask about its capabilities and functionalities that you wouldn't ask if you're looking at it as a battery. So I, I feel like there could be a little bit of a bait and switch going on of, you know, hey, look at this battery, but don't ask about things that you would ask about if you knew it was a capacitor. Uh, so we'll wait and see. I, time, time will tell, but like I said, I, I am cautious about whether this is as legitimate as it's being made out to be. And also, I feel like it, it, it's important to note, as that example I gave of the Chevy Silverado, it's still not good enough with the specs that it currently has to replace internal combustion engine vehicles in certain applications, right? Because frankly, reducing the weight of the Chevy Silverado by 500 pounds while still maintaining a 400 mile base range is not good enough to make a three quarter ton or one ton heavy hauler replacement truck. It's just not because there's a reason gas trucks have a base range of 800, 900 miles. It's because when you hook up a trailer, you're going to cut your range in half. Well, now you have 400 to 500 miles of usable range pulling a 30 to 40 foot fifth wheel trailer or whatever, right? High profile trailer. So if you know you're going to cut your range in half, you need the base range to be double. Well, 400 to 500 miles is good enough for a basic truck, good enough for a half ton truck, not good enough for a heavy hauler. And in order to achieve that in an EV, we really do need to be looking at battery pack energy density that's approaching closer to five to 600 uh, watt hours per kilogram at the cell level, 300 to 400 watt hours per kilogram at the pack level. And then, and then we'll maybe be um, approaching the appropriate uh, energy density for that application. So even if all of these other claims are true, there's still work to be done. But like I said, going into it, I have my doubts as to whether the Donut Labs claims are valid, not because anything that they said was untrue, but because they could possibly be misrepresenting by omission. So anyway, I'd love to hear what you think. Am I being too negative about this? Am I thinking too critically about it? Uh, or does it just kind of make sense that what they're actually talking about is a supercapacitor and not a solid state battery? As always, thank you for watching.